Welcome to Basic Brewing Radio for Thursday, December 15th, 2011. I'm James Spencer. Here at Basic Brewing Radio, we're all about home brewing. For this week, how would you brew in the zombie apocalypse? Or could you brew if you invaded the home of a non-home brewer? We asked brewers Casey Lohman and Jen Royer to take up the challenge. If you're new to home brewing and would like to get into the hobby for the first time, check out our website, basicbrewing.com, where you can find archives of our audio and video podcasts and our DVDs to walk you through basic and more advanced brewing techniques. And our 2012 Brewers Logbooks are in the house and going out the door by the stacks. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. My username is Basic Brewing, all one word. Also, you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash basicbrewing.james. We also have a Facebook page, uh, show page on uh, Facebook, facebook.com slash basicbrewing. Thanks again to everybody clicking on the Amazon.com associate link on our basicbrewing.com site. Whenever you think of Amazon, think of us and click on our associate link first. It won't cost you any extra, and you'll be helping us to bring you the show. And we definitely appreciate your support during this busy, busy holiday season. It's just amazing the, the amount and wide variety of stuff that you guys are picking up. And don't, uh, don't forget there is also an Amazon.co.uk link on our site as well. We also have associate links for Brew Your Own Magazine and the American Home Brewers Association on our site, too. They also make wonderful Christmas gifts. Uh, and you can find our basic brewing iPhone and Android podcast apps on their respective stores. We're on the BlackBerry podcast directory now, too. And we've been on uh, the Stitcher app for a long time, but I haven't mentioned that in a while. So check us out on that as well. Uh, we had a lot of fun with our uh, homebrew invasion brewing session. Oh, before we get to that, though, uh, I posted an episode of Basic Brewing video uh, on No Sparge Brewing. If you remember, we did a, a, an audio episode with Chris Colby on No Sparge Brewing and had a lot of fun with that. So I went ahead and uh, brewed a batch of beer using that uh, technique, and you can see the outcome on Basic Brewing video this week as well. All right, let's get right to it. Uh, a while ago... This is the germ of the the, the genesis of the idea. Uh, I got to thinking a lot of people are intimidated by all the equipment that's usually usually associated with home brewing. You know, we love it once we get into it. Uh, we we just love all the all the gear that we accumulate. But if you're new to home brewing or thinking about getting into it, you know, you walk into the homebrew store and you're surrounded by all the kettles and the mash tuns and the fermenters and such, and you're thinking, oh my gosh. Uh, so I had an idea. Could you brew a batch of beer without all that stuff? You know, how down to basics can you get as far as equipment goes? So to answer the question, I asked our friends Casey and Jen to step up to the plate, or to the kettle, I guess, and uh, our friends uh, Kyle and Laura Kellums, I asked them to be brave, <laughs> open their house, which they generously did, and uh, we invaded Okay, here we are in the kitchen of Kyle and Laura Kellum. Say hi, Kyle. Hi, Kyle. Say hi, Laura. Hello. <laughs> and we are here with uh, Casey and Jen as well, who you've heard on the show before. Uh, Jen Royer and Casey Lohman. Say hi. Hello. <laughs> in the same key. <laughs> And this is a, it's, it's an interesting uh, experiment here today. It'll be fun to see how it turns out. Uh, my goal was just to see, uh, because we are so tied into our brewing equipment as brewers, and some people are just so locked into, you know, you've got to have this to brew and you've got to have that to brew as far as equipment goes, uh, just like the five-gallon batch. I mean, for a while, people were just locked into, you've got to brew at least five gallons of beer. And we've uh, shown that you don't have to do that. M one of my goals today was to uh, fix a situation where we come, we crash somebody's house with ingredients and then brew beer with whatever we find in the house. And, and, and Jen said, well, what's a scenario? <laughs> so Jen had to have a scenario. So uh, a narrative, a, a narrative. Yeah, it, it's it's like one of those survival shows where they drop somebody out in the wilderness or something. Um, so here's the scenario: you're on the way home from the homebrew shop, so you have ingredients in your car, 
and the zombie apocalypse happens. So you take refuge in a nearby house, uh, which just happens to be this house, and then, of course, you decide to brew beer. Of course. First priority. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm definitely going to die, so having beer would be good. Yeah, yes. yeah. It's going to take you a couple weeks to die, apparently. Oh, so, uh, so first, have, has any beer been brewed in this house, to your knowledge? Never. Not that we know of. Have, have you ever witnessed beer being brewed? Not really. I mean, except on your video podcast, which I watch all the time. No. <laughs> no, I don't know the first thing about brewing beer. Do you, have you ever consumed beer? Often. <laughs> Kyle was one of the corrupting influences in my college life. Uh, he was always the one saying, hey, what you up to? Uh, we've got that uh, botany lab coming up. Blow it off. Come with me down to Dixon Street and get a picture. I would like to deny that. But <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is quite accurate, actually. <laughs> So, so Laura, what do you think about uh, people rifling through your, your house, rifling through your business here, looking for stuff? We don't mind. I think it'll be fun to see what we have in the house and whether any of it can be used to make beer. And you, you've just moved in, so, yeah. you know, it's, uh, the house is in good shape, so. <laughs> There's not too, huge layers of dust over everything yet. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, Gals, what uh, what is the strategy? What what? How are we going to approach this? Well, I'm definitely going to look for the largest pot I can find, and then maybe some ingredients, and try to use as few of our ingredients as possible. Yeah, because we have to conserve. Yeah, we got to conserve those yeah. pots and things. If and I, my biggest worry was water, like tap water, how to filter it. But luckily, we found a filter, so. That's, got, that's good. We've got a brand new uh, Brita water pitcher right out of the box, yep. mm-hmm. which uh, is, I swear, a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the, what, what do you think is going to be the biggest limitation? What, what to ferment in and how to keep it clean, I guess. Sanitizing might be an issue. Yeah, we forgot to pick sanitizer up at the store <laughs> before yeah. the apocalypse thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. So I have uh, uh, I have brought um, a big box of uh, a big tub of grain, um, you know, base malts and specialty grains, and I brought hops and I've brought yeast, um, but I've also brought some things that I'm going to consider you know sort of cheating things, like I brought a grain mill. And I, I brought a scale and a refractometer and a hydrometer, and I even brought sanitizer. Uh, and I even brought a, a Mr. Beer fermenter, but that's, that's like completely cheating. cheating. Yeah. So we, <laughs> we, we do have all the stuff uh, that we need to make beer. It's just that it's up to you to, uh, to try to get along with as, as little of that as possible. Right. Yeah, that's definitely what we're aiming to do. Mm-hmm. Well, wouldn't people have those if they'd just been to the home brewing store? Wouldn't you? Couldn't? Couldn't you have bought purchased those there? In theory, yeah. in theory, you wouldn't just carry your grain mill around with you. Well, so uh, you guys did that. <laughs> 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 I thought that was just standard operating procedure. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, you know, some some might because you never know when you might want to stop and uh, brew a batch of beer. I'm interested to see, because you've got to have something else besides the grain and the hops, right? Or no? Well, you've got to, to adhere to the Reinheitsgebot, which I'm wearing my Reinheitsgebot as a four-letter word shirt. Uh, you have to have water, you have to have grain, you have to have hops, and yeast. Oh, okay. And that's, that's beer. But you get bonus points... You know, we're not going to actually keep score, although Kyle is quite the scorekeeper. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he might, before the end of the day, he will probably have a score system. Casey uh, already leads one nothing. I can't tell you why. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, they're not competing against I each other. They're a team. <laughs> so, but, you, but you get bonus points uh, if you, the more stuff that you use that you find in the house. Okay. So, so keep that in mind. The more stuff of theirs that we get dirty, we get more points. <laughs> <laughs> or that you use yeah. in the, in the actual ingredients. Let's squash. 
Squash. We could do that. Yeah, <laughs> there, yeah, there is such We've a thing as it. We've done a pumpkin beer uh, with pumpkin and roasted it in the oven and put it in the mash, and it turned out nicely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not beyond uh, comprehension that you would make a butternut uh, uh, recipe, but uh, I mean, we are we are uh, we are in somebody else's house, though, so we <laughs> we are kind of limited, uh, you know, for from for hospitality. So, uh, okay. uh, yeah. Okay, fair game. Ideas. So we, we have free reign to just do whatever we want in your house? We can go to the grocery store and buy more food. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the apocalypse. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> After the show is over, when the apocalypse ends, we can go buy more. <laughs> Post-apocalypse Post food. <laughs> Post-apocalypse sale. <laughs> it, it, it'll only be the nasty, you know, the, the boar stuff that's still left on the, on the store shelves, you know, because it, it's, it's like when it snows around here, you know, oh, toilet paper is the know. first thing to go off the shelves, and, bread. and then bread and milk mm -hmm. and eggs, and yeah. then you know pop tarts and spam and whatever. So nobody buys fresh vegetables when the snowstorm <laughs> happens. No. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, well, should we start? Uh, should we start rummaging? Yeah. So. All right. I did just think of one thing. We have to figure out something to use to mash the grains in, and how we're going to get it out of there. Yeah. That might be a real tricky, mm. little tricky. We need to brainstorm on that one. Yep. Well, what, what, I'm allowed to help them by like telling what we have, like. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because if they if they crashed your house during the zombie or apocalypse, the I would be helping them. Okay. Yeah. So like, does that mean like a food processor or something, or does that mean something well, wet? Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. You, when you t when you mash your grains, what we usually use is like a igloo cooler, and you know it's got a spigot on it. So you put your grain in there, and then you the put water, the and we there's some kind of like a little wire mesh strainer in the bottom, and then you you know open up the drain the water from the bottom, kind of under the grain. So we gotta but, think of some way to do that. But using brew in the bag, you can mash in the True. kettle. The bag, yeah. You could use a mesh like nylon bag or cheesecloth. Or, or a pillowcase. Or a, I've had a stuck sparge in the past where I've had to use a spaghetti strainer, you know, a colander yep. to... I thought about that, too. Oh, you just, like, yeah. use that as a false bottom? Yeah, or just a scoop the scoop the grain out, out of the mash tun yeah. into the colander. That's so what I was okay. thinking about. Yeah, yeah. Ah. So, so, so what I'm going to do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause the, the, uh, the recording and, and let you guys rum, rummage around for equipment, and then we'll, we'll get back together. All right. Ooh, zombies. Ooh. <laughs> So we're making progress. We have some equipment laid out here on the on the table. What do we got? We have a couple of glass vessels. Uh, one looks like a barrel. It's a little, small little glass barrel to ferment for fermenting in. We have a couple of big pots. One, well, probably we'll use one for the mash tun and to boil in same pot. Um, we're figuring out how to grind our grain. We're going to try a couple different things. We're going to try a food processor, and then we also thought we could try a rolling pin with the grains in a bag, or a meat hammer with the grains in the bag to crush them. Yeah, because, I mean, we've all done the, the Ziploc bag with the specialty grains, you know, to, just to crack them for, for steeping. But, you know, you're trying to extract um, fermentables, not just, the, not just for color and flavor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly, and it's one thing where the food processor might grind it a little bit too much, and the, I'm thinking maybe the meat hammer might be the way to go, that's my guess right now, <laughs> but that would take a minute, uh, depending on how large the beer is. So, so you've got one pot that you can use for a mash tun, and then you, know, you, can, you can get the, the wort from that pot into another, and we were lucky enough to find this thing, this yeah, kind strainer, of mesh strainer thing. Kind of thing. Yeah, it's going to be perfect. We'll just use that to scoop the grain out and then... Yeah, it's a metal strainer. Yeah. So you've, we found two vessels. This is a this is kind of a I guess it's a candy jar kind of a thing. It's a it's a perfect for beer. I mean it's a it's what a gallon? Do you think? Probably. Like yeah. like a gallon yeah. uh, jar yeah, that's shaped like a barrel. Mm -hmm. It's a clear glass jar, and then we ha we also have a glass pitcher. So you know we could we could really we could have two batches of beer going. Exactly. We could, we could do two, two different kinds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. We're getting ambitious here. We haven't even started. <laughs> So, uh, so that was relatively painless. Um, so.
So you, in here we've got uh, got all your grain. We've got the big bag of two row. We got all kinds of different. We got twenty, sixty, and ninety level bond crystal. Mm -hmm. uh, we got some chocolate malt. We got some like too, way too much black patent. Yeah, I don't know. Small bag of <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I think at one time I bought like five pounds of black patent. I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah, <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> don't drink beer at the homebrew store yeah. while you're buying things. <laughs> uh, so and, oh, and there's a there's a bottle of uh, of uh, star, star sand hiding in there. Which may be a bonus item. I don't know, yeah. hmm. or maybe you bought that at the homebrew store. So anyway, there's, uh, you know, happen. so there's nothing too exotic in the grain department. That's okay. But you know, you can you can find other stuff, and you got hops. Mm -hmm. You got all kinds of. These are kind of leftover hops. Yeah. So. Simcoe, Styrian Golding, Magnum, Cascade. Amarillo, I see a lot of American hops here, and Centennial, yep. And then yeast packets are in there too. Yeast, yes. So that's the Saf Brew T58, that's kind of a Belgian oh, strain, okay. and then the US 05, of course. All right. So th those two. Nice. And we have some whole leaf cascades. We don't have any way to weigh anything, so that that's another thing we're thinking is what, some of these bags actually are marked and they're unopened, it says that like this bag is two pounds. Mm -hmm. So what we thought is we would pour it into a measuring cup, see how many cups that is, and figure out sort of how many pounds per cup. And that's going to be how we weigh. Yeah, and it's not going to be exact, because I guess depending on the roasting level and the moisture level in the grain, this, yeah. that, and the other, it's not going to be exact, but I think that's a really clever way to get an approximate uh, get an approximate. Um, uh, measurement. Mm -hmm. So what are your concerns at this point? What's worrying you now? Nothing. Yeah, we totally <laughs> got this. No, the <laughs> unexpected, that's what's worrying me, yeah. is, is we're going to get started. Stuff we forget. And then we're going to yeah. go, oh no! <laughs> I don't know what that's going to be yet, but something definitely well, like that's going to happen. If we're going to, to not cheat and not use sanitizer, then we've got to definitely, we haven't had that figured out yet. And right. so. What about the zombies too? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> the zombies too. Um, I think that Kyle's on that. Yeah, yeah. He's I've standing got that. at the door with like this pitchfork, uh, looking ready to go. I got a crossbow. I, oh, <laughs> crossbow. Sorry, yeah, yeah no. my mistake. <laughs> crossbow. Uh, so, uh, and you've been through the you've been through the uh, the spice cabinet, yeah. and what have you found? Oh, we found some peppercorns, some ginger. We found coriander, cinnamon, and bay, bay leaves. leaves. Yeah. So we have some options. We also have um, a big bowl of oranges and grapefruits here, which we thought maybe some orange peel or citrus mm -hmm. of some sort. Seems like we could, could go in there. have fun going a Belgian route on this one. Yeah, yeah. maybe some brown sugar. Brown, yeah, there's brown sugar in there. Mm -hmm. They also have molasses mm -hmm. so and white sugar if we want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. so, I mean, really, uh, they made it easy for us in a lot of ways so far. <laughs> yeah, and there's been no conspiring, right? I mean, this is just yeah. your stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yesterday Kyle said, should I buy anything? And I'm like, no, this is this is supposed to be, you know, real world, I mean, besides the zombies, uh, <laughs> real world uh, conditions. Oh, and we also right. found a thermometer, a candy oh, thermometer. Oh, yeah, 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 because I, I forgot to pack a thermometer as a cheat uh, in case you needed it. So you, you actually found a thermometer. Mm -hmm. What were you going to say, Laura? Oh, I was just going to say, it's definitely, there was definitely no conspiring because we could very well open the molasses jar and find out it doesn't pour or something. There, it, might be, it might be old. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> and we can fix that. All right. In, in, in walks my wife, Susan. Say hi. She doesn't want to, she doesn't want to talk. She, was, <laughs> she did the waving of the hand in a threatening way to get me to not talk to her. But she does exist. Right, guys? You can vouch. She's there. She's I don't there. See her. You don't I'll know her. Try. She's Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kyle has opened the beer. So <laughs> you you were also on the way home uh, from the uh, from the beer store too. Okay, they're getting back to work. I'm gonna I'm gonna shut up and let them go. Okay, as you're as you're pouring a beer, pouring one of my homebrews. Ooh, it's it's good looking. <laughs> Let's see if it tastes as good as it uh, looks. Better. Oh, wow. There was no grimace there. Uh, <laughs> I know, it's very good. 
So we are now to the point where uh, we have our grain. Mm -hmm. You have your, now. You had an ingenious way of uh, which we may have talked about before of how how you uh, estimated your weight. Right. We had a one bag of grain that said on it that it was two pounds. Now it was a bag of crystal, which we thought crystal malt might be a little bit lighter in weight than like two row. So we poured it into a measuring cup, and we came up with. 3.5 cups of grain might be a pound. <laughs> <laughs> Question mark. <laughs> so, so what did you wind up for? Uh, the, how much grain did you get? Okay. We put... Oh, and then we also um, kind of adjusted for thinking that the row might be a little heavier. So we actually went with three cups per pound. So we did 15 cups of two row, which we're thinking could be around five pounds. And I weighed that, and uh, I'm going to tell you, now this, the, it was the weight with the bucket, and the bucket's not very heavy, it's just a little no. plastic bucket, and it weighed, you wanted it to be five pounds, it weighed four pounds, 14 ounces. Wow, <laughs> hell yeah, that was really close. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's why I was smiling. You thought I was smiling because you were off. I was smiling because you were on. That's why uh, I always think if someone's smiling, they're laughing at it. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, you did really well. That was oh, really that good. That was amazing, okay. And then what up? And then what? So, well, then we just have a few specialty grains. We had a half a cup of aromatic, um, one cup of 60 Levabon crystal, and one and a half, maybe, tablespoons of black patent. We just kind of threw a little handful in there. And, and there's no scale on the premises. That's why we're measuring in volume rather than oh, in weight. Yes. But it, it, I mean, it's, you know, it's going to make a beer, uh, yeah. whatever it is, and I'm sure it's going to be, I would bet it's going to be tasty. Uh, now, this, that's a lot of grain for what volume of water did we figure out? Uh, well, we have, right now we have two cup, two, two cups, <laughs> <laughs> two <laughs> gallons in a big pot, a kettle, that we're going to pour the grains into for, to mash. I think we're going to sparge, sparge it also. Mm -hmm. So we'll, you know, I don't know, we're shooting for about gallon and a half. Yeah, well, you want your apocalyptic beer to be strong. I mean, <laughs> you don't want to mess around with session beers in the apocalypse. <laughs> and you don't know, uh, we, ha we're, we haven't done our experiments with the milling yet, so we don't know how right. good we can be at milling. So, you know, maybe better to estimate higher than, than lower. Mm -hmm. And we, we're going to try to use the two fermenters, and you figured out how big those were? Yeah, one is one gallon, and the other one's a half gallon. So... And our apologies to everybody on the metric system. Uh, it's the <laughs> zombie apocalypse, and you just have to figure it out. <laughs> so we've got our grains, and now we've got to figure out, and we got the water heating for the uh, mash. <clears throat> and this big, fairly, you know, it's what, a two-gallon? Did we figure out that was a two-gallon kettle? Yes. yes. So well, it, no, we have two gallons of water in there right now, so oh. it's probably more like two-and-a-half gallon kettle, I'd say. Yeah, it's a, so it's it's a nice good size kettle. Got lucky, got yeah, really lucky there, and got a candy thermometer in there that you found. That's seventy five. So yeah, we're we can turn that off. Okay, that'll hold for us. Yeah, while we do our grain crushing experiments. Maybe yes. it depends on how long it takes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the good thing about mashing in the kettle is you can always bring up the temperature easily, and you can add cold mm -hmm. water to. Uh, now the the most time consuming part of this has been running the water through the Brita water pitcher. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I've been That's trying to keep my eye on that and refill every time it uh, <laughs> is ready. <laughs> but you know, that, I mean, that's uh, I think we're in a, I think you're doing really well. We just got to figure out how to how to mill this stuff. Yeah. And that's, then, uh, we've got a lot of good options. We have the food processor might work. Processor might work. We've got. A uh, rolling Washer. pin and a kind of meat hammer thing. So w <laughs> one of these three things is going to work. So yeah, yeah. Now it's time to get sweating. <laughs> 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 All right, I'm going to hit pause again, and we'll go to the next step. Uh, it's, not doing it. it's just moving them around. It's yeah, not uh, doing anything. Put more in there. 
Mm. Uh, is it because um, sometimes like maybe I, the blade's not on there right or something? No, it's no, moving. It's, it's spinning. Totally spinning. It's, it's just, just not uh, it very that, effective. Put them in that little one. I put more in there. More in there? Because mm-hmm. sometimes, like with a coffee grinder, if you don't have very much, it takes a long time. But if you have more, it like stirs it around better or something. Maybe the mm-hmm. little one would I'm be s- good. I'm skeptical. James is skeptical. It's meant for smaller. Close. This is the sound of grain being milled in a way that it may never have been milled before. <laughs> what are you doing? We are using a cast iron skillet. We have the grain inside a large cast iron skillet. And then we have a smaller cast iron skillet that we are rolling like on its side across the grain. And, and it's, it's working. working. Yeah. Because the food processor sucked. Yeah. It didn't work at all. Surprising. I thought it was going to crush it more yeah, or too much, and it did quite the opposite. Yeah. I, too, thought it, would just gonna, it was just going to be powder and useless, but it just kind of moved all the kernels ar- around in there. The thing is, it did, this takes a while. Yes. Yeah, we'll probably need a few more beers while doing this. <laughs> I, I, can do, I can help with that. <laughs> I thought you might. <laughs> Well, this was Jen's idea. Laura had a nice collection of cast iron that we uh, utilized here. Not everybody would have that. <laughs> That's true. There's a whole family of cast iron thingies, otherwise known as pans. <laughs> cast iron things. Thingies. <laughs> so the. That tastes good. It tastes like a little like oatmeal. Exactly. It's barley. Mm, yeah, it does. It tastes like. Um, it tastes like oatmeal. Yeah, not cream of wheat, but that brown one. What's the brown one? Malta meal. Yeah, it tastes like malta meal. Huh. Do you want the lid back on? Yeah. So you're it's tasting them at now. Now they've just mashed in, uh, and now they're they're going to rest for an hour like that. Oh. Now remember how that tastes. Okay. Okay. And like after an hour, meal. we'll see uh, we'll see how it tastes again. <laughs> You're ruining the taste. Marina ate eight of them. Marina has goat cheese. It's expensive. So, <laughs> dogs eating goat cheese. So, so Casey, um, we thank you for telling on her. We uh, uh, we, we figured we figured out. Yum, 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 yum. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh, oh, she's still tasting. <laughs> okay, so so y'all figured out a way. To mill the grain with the cast iron kettle, the pots, or the, the thingies, the cast iron thingies. That's why I called them thingies before. They're skillets, is skillets. what they are. Mm-hmm. So you figured out how to do it. Yes. And you got credit for that. And we saw that it was going to take like five hours right. to yeah. do that. So I went out and I got my grain mill from the car. Yeah. So you still get credit for being, yeah. uh, uh, having the ingenuity uh, to, uh, to, f- figure out the solution right. and just because we're at somebody's house and we don't want to be here till midnight we went ahead and got the grain mill and now right. uh how did the uh how the, ma- how did the, the mash in go uh it great. went great yeah. yeah we used our little candy thermometer that we found and we got the water up to about 165 167 yeah. maybe and poured it in the grain, and it looks like we hit around 152, 153. Yeah, which a little is bit above 150. What we like to do. Mm-hmm. So awesome. So, and yeah. you know, you know the best part is you got an hour to play. I know. Yeah, exactly. Hang out. Now I get to drink more of your recover beer. from the grain grinding. <laughs> 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 yeah, that was very. It was grueling. Yes. So uh, <laughs> good job. We're, and we're now we're making beer. Exactly. Yep. We're on our way. <laughs> Woo! Okay, it's been an hour, All right, and, and the Kellumses are going to taste the mash, post-mash. After mash. <laughs> Trapper John, MD. <laughs> it's much sweeter now. It is much sweeter now. That's good. I would eat that for breakfast. I really <laughs> would. 
<laughs> I would not eat it for breakfast, but it is sweet. Mm-hmm. See, those, those, the enzymes have turned the starches in the grain into sugar, which the yeast likes to eat and turn into alcohol. That's what happens next. So, is yeast? this now alcoholic? No. Oh. Right, what do you eat for breakfast then? <laughs> when, the yeast, <laughs> when the yeast eats this sweetness, it's, it will be alcoholic. Yeah, the yeast eats the sugar and turns it into alcohol and CO2, carbon dioxide, which it burps out the... There are analogies that you could come up with, but that would merge into the Cardassian discussion we had earlier. So, the <laughs> so anyway, what we got to do is now we got this barley soup, and now we got to separate the liquid from the grain that's in there. You have to scoop. Wish we had S- a scoop, thing. which rhymes yeah. with. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so amazingly enough, the Kellumses have like fifty thousand strainers. Yep, yep. They you have a strainer fetish. Strainer rich house <laughs> household. So what's the plan now? Well, um, that's what I'm trying to figure out. We have three strainers, all like fine wire mesh, which is cool. So we were thinking maybe stacking, you know, the strainers. We got the biggest one with the medium one inside it. That could be really good. Mm-hmm. And James had suggested maybe scooping out some grain and kind of trying to form a little grain bed. <laughs> Mm-hmm. To pour slowly, kind of try to pour through, which I think is a great idea. Mm-hmm. So I just now we need to decide which container, which one of these many pots that we have sitting here is the <laughs> right one to use. I think that one's good. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, you've it's got a roaster kind of a, pan. You've yeah, got the like two strainers in a roaster pan. Yeah, this is perfect. I mean, we could just almost pour this in if we wanted to. We have a pouring might be too forceful. Yeah, that one's like. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe uh, yeah, yeah. we could use this glass measuring cup here to kind of yep. like scoop, scoop and pour. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's right. that's good to me. That's, uh, All right. Well, maybe get a hot. Shall we? Uh, here? And you got you, you got another uh, pot sparge on the water. stove, yeah. heating oh, up the, the sparge other water. The have is oh, <laughs> they're, pot they're, pads. <laughs> yeah, they're, there are more pot holders than I've <laughs> seen in my entire <laughs> life. Yep. Thousand of these things. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> this entire drawer. My right. mama makes <laughs> her, very nice. her mama makes them. <laughs> if if anybody leaves here with any kind of a scorched finger, it's your it's fault. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna watch. Oh, we need a oh. You where's your? I don't know. You just had it. Where did it go? Oh. Okay. All right. This is. This is give the play by play here. You're scooping this. Trial number one. This big. Scoopy thing. We could Big. consider this the Vorloff, right? Yeah, or just, yeah, or the louder. Look at that, okay. It's catching. Oh, look at all that grain staying in the. Chunks down in there. Well, that's why I'm thinking we could maybe, after we get a grain bed set up here, we could actually dump this back. Oh, yeah, do, and actually do a Vorloff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's see, let me scoop. Try to get. Oh, watch out. I'm sorry. There I go burning myself. <laughs> I mean, cut out myself screaming. <laughs> I was just trying to get as much grain as possible in that scoop. I thought it might be. Yeah, be careful. Here, see, I knew if I said if someone scorches burning. their fingers, yeah. it's your fault. And you know what? You could take that other strainer and kind of press it, and you could squeeze the wort out of that. Uh, you could nest the strainers even more and squeeze the wort. What do you think about hmm. squeezing the grain? Well, I don't think that's a bad idea. I was also thinking, yeah, if you did that, would could you just keep pouring it through like that? And that would be your grain bed thing. Oh, look at that. Now you've reversed the nesting thing. I don't know. It's and, uh, yeah, so it's looking good. How about... you got a nice... look. That's a nice looking work. I need to take a gravity reading and not tell you what it is. <laughs> I'm going to pour this back into Okay. This. Be careful of hot side aeration. I'm just doing... I'm just saying that. <laughs> Yeah. That's our horror laugh right there. Okay. Yeah, that looks good. I'm going to pour this back in because I ran out of work. All right. This is pretty exciting. Yep, it is. This just might work. I need to take a picture. Okay, I'm going to pause and take a picture. Okay, one lesson that we've learned in this experience that for those who aren't brewing, it's really boring and they have to watch... Arrested Development on Netflix. <laughs> but for those of us in the kitchen, it's really cool. You, y'all have uh, now. We haven't talked since you actually 
collected the word. Right. How did that go? It went really well. I mean, it took us longer than usual, but we, with uh, all of their strainers that they had, we, we got a method that was pretty good. Um, just kind of stacked some strainers um, on top of each other, kind of got a grain bed, and then scooped out and poured and into another container until we got some pretty clear wort. Yeah, I was surprised. At how, I mean, there were... It, it is not a chunky wort at all. <laughs> there aren't. There are a few chunks in there, but not very many. Yeah. Yeah, and and wait, I have it. I have to walk over here and get a, get a piece of paper because uh, I have the refractometer, and uh, you are not making decisions based on the refractometer. We're just using this as a a metric, uh, just yes. a measurement tool to see uh, the first runnings that we got from the wort was ten seventy three. Pretty big. It was a pretty big beer, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, y'all did you did sp- you did sparge because we so came good. short of where you wanted to be for the volume. Yeah, so we, we did totally fly sparged, right? And we just yeah. uh, poured. <laughs> we had a strainer and we poured hot water over the grains that we had, and yeah, they worked out great. And the second runnings were ten fourteen, yeah. and we collected what half a gallon or so. Yeah, yeah about a little mm-hmm. less maybe. So the the pre boil. Gravity was ten fifty seven, mm-hmm. and about what two gallons? Yeah, we're thinking it's about two gallons. Mm-hmm. And then you added some. Uh, we looked in the in the in the cabinet. Yeah, we found uh, Steen's one hundred percent pure cane syrup, which is a lot like molasses, but not exactly. <laughs> it tastes a little lighter to me than molasses, not mm-hmm. like, but it it is very similar. Yeah, very tasty. And yeah. you added a uh, half a cup, half a cup, which brought our pre boil gravity after the sugar was added to, at 1064 so st- you know it's a, it, it's going to be a pretty big beer it is. this is an apocalypse beer yeah, yeah. that's right the zombies are knocking at the door we got to yeah, do we, something we got to get a little drunk here <laughs> <laughs> and thank goodness you went uh, you apparently went to the liquor store on the way or the beer store on the way home from the uh, <laughs> homebrew store we because always it, do that yeah because uh, mm-hmm. we we have a nice chest of uh, homebrew and other uh, tasty commercial beers so uh, <laughs> which is you know if you're going to do this experiment do that so that the the people who aren't brewing are also entertained, not only by the, you know, Arrested Development episodes on Netflix, but also by, <laughs> by the beers. Uh, so you so uh, you have uh, you've settled on a hopping strategy. Yeah, we have. We're going to use a small, tiny palm full of Magnum to bitter at sixty minutes. Uh, and then maybe add a 20-minute addition of some Styrian Goldings and then some spices at the end. So you, you measured out in your palm the, the magnum, and then I, then I measured it on the scale afterward. Uh, and that it came up to, what, three grams? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I, I think that's a pretty good amount. Yeah. From our in-our-head cipherings, it seemed like the appropriate amount. <laughs> <laughs> which is which is cool, uh, you know. When you brew for a while, it's kind of like cooking. You you learn how to like add a dash of this and a little pinch of that and whatever. And so this is this is. I'm so excited about how this is going. You're coming up to the boil now. Yeah, we're just we're getting really there. close. Yep. Yeah, it's oh, very, very oh, close. Actually, oh, oh, right oh, 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 yep, yep. The boil has started. Yep. Oh my goodness! Thank goodness we're in here watching. It, so it's actually super accurate. It yeah. was just a little bit of a Yeah, the so the candy thermometer is good, it's and good now you're getting a boil going. We just got to make sure we make don't sure do it. Boil over the on the Kellum's uh, stove. Oh, oh my goodness. So we got beer going. Yeah. We have beer going. Have How beer cool boiling. is this? Yeah. So cool. Okay, here we are. Uh, last time we talked, we were talking about bittering hops, and uh, other things have been added to the wort since then. What 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 do we added? We added about what point three ounces, as I guess, point uh, four of Styrian Goldings at twenty minutes, eighteen minutes actually, and uh, <laughs> then then after the five minute mark, we put a few um, seven black peppercorns. Uh, because they're supposed to be similar to Grains of Paradise, but not quite as awesome, but they had that. And uh, we used just a little bit of ground coriander and uh, the zest of one orange. 
and so. and then we we chilled using an ice bath and and we figured out that the uh, the candy thermometer the lowest increment. temperature increment on the on the thermometer was seventy five degrees Celsius uh, and so we were a little bit below that mm-hmm. and so uh, we think that's good so we're gonna we're gonna pour into the fermenters and add our yeast and which yeast are you gonna pick. Oh, we're going to use that dry... Uh, the T58? T58, yep. which we've Safe never proof. used before, but, I mean, this is definitely belgian and, and method, so we might as well use the Belgian-style yeah. kind of yeast. It makes sense. Mm-hmm. Plus, I've never tried it, so a small batch brew is a perfect time to do that. Yeah. And we're pushing the limits on gravity here, I bet. <laughs> we made a pretty big beer, I think, so this will be great. So I did take a refractometer reading, and it was 19 and a half bricks uh which is a 1078 which is not extremely huge it's not the biggest beer that you know probably any of us have ever brewed but uh, it is a decent sized beer and uh we will we will pitch we'll pour our, our beer into our our candy glass candy <laughs> barrel thingy and our pitcher and we'll put some foil on the top of it and our We'll pitch our yeast, and we'll give uh, Kyle and Laura instructions on uh, on what just to leave it alone right. and let it do its thing. And uh, we'll be back in a little while to uh, bottle it up. I can't wait. So, what have we learned? I mean, has this been a fun experience? Oh, it's been a blast, definitely. Well, one thing I learned is without your normal brewing equipment, things are going to take a lot longer. Mm. Yes, exactly. Yeah, and but but I think that the thing that the the most important thing we've learned is that you can brew beer absolutely without it, all the fancy equipment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can do it. I mean, it's it was a fun experiment. It was a blast. Mm-hmm. I'm really anxious to see how this turns out. I'm, you know, and with everything that I've tasted that that y'all have brewed, it's going to be wonderful. So uh, <laughs> it's a good collaboration. So, so awesome. Thank you so much, Casey and Jen, for, for taking part in this experiment. And uh, we will check back to uh, see how we bottle this stuff. I'm just looking at this kettle with our, our beer in it. And, and we're about to pour. And, uh, we'll let you have control yeah, of the yeast packet. Yeah, we're about we're to. We're going to divide that up. Like one yeast packet, really... I mean, one yeast packet is going to be more than enough. Oh yeah, for yeah. this amount of beer. Yeah, yeah. we're going to try to divide it evenly between the two we will. fermenters. It's going to be great. Yeah, can't wait, and I can't wait to see how our volume turns out because I think we may be <laughs> over a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank y'all. Thank you, Jake. Well, that was an incredibly fun day, and uh, I really appreciate Casey and Jen for sticking their necks out, so to speak. Uh, and I really appreciate the Columnses for letting us uh, play at their house. A couple of clarifications. Uh, of course, we did not pitch the yeast at 75 degrees Celsius. We pitched it at uh, 75 degrees Fahrenheit. And we went ahead and used uh, the star sand that I brought along for sanitization uh, because we just worked so darn hard. And we did have bleach in the house, but we said, what the heck? It's getting late in the day. It's been a long day. And uh, let's just go ahead and, and do it right. So now there are there's a this this funny barrel shaped jar and a pitcher of fermenting beer at the Kellams' house. And now to get an update, we go to uh, via the internet Kyle Kellams. Welcome back, Kyle. Hello, James. How are you? I'm very well. Thanks again for for being so hospitable and letting us sort of wreck your house temporarily. Actually, it should be pointed out that the house was left, I think, as clean, if not cleaner, than when you guys started. <laughs> That's good. That's good. So uh, last night, uh, which was uh, 24 hours after we brewed the beer, I mm-hmm. had you uh, go and uh, lift the foil briefly to take a look at what the beer was doing. And what did you see? Uh, there was some bubbly, foamy stuff on top. <laughs> if that gets too technical, let me know. <laughs> yeah, and then you can smell it. You put it in a closet in a guest room, and you could kind of smell the the beer ferment, fermenting. Not fomenting. That's enough. No. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> well, excellent. That's a that's a that's a very good indication that we have active fermentation. So you, yes, you and I have shared uh, a few pitches of pitchers of uh, beer in our time, but never had that. Have we had those pitchers actively fermenting? So this is a first. As far as I know, yes. <laughs> so are you excited? I am. Um, I think you bottle it sometime now in the next couple of weeks, right? Yeah, yeah. It'll be a couple of weeks, and we'll come. We'll right. invade your house again briefly uh, to bottle it up, and then it'll be ready to uh, sample a couple weeks after that. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's it's kind of interesting that something that we're going to consume is actually developing in our house. But Laura and I are both very excited. We can't wait to taste it. Awesome. It's alive. You have living things in your... Yeah, in your... I don't... Okay. <laughs> I don't know if I wanted to know that. <laughs> you don't usually want living things in your closet, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, very good. Just to, And we did a little science insp- experiment where we... Uh, there, the Both of those containers are in a plastic tub... Mm-hmm. And uh, I said, "Boy, I bet you the I bet you the bottom of that tub is just full of CO two." And you proved it by taking a lighter and putting it right. down into the thing. And it and what happened? Yeah, the the flame went out. The flame went out. So there's CO two in the bottom. That. So I said, "Keep your gerbils out of that out of that uh, bucket, <laughs> out of that container." <laughs> All right, Kyle. Uh, All I, right. Once again, I appreciate your time, and we'll we'll uh, we'll check back with you. I can't wait to see how this turns out. Well, there you go. Would you have done anything different? Are there any ideas that you could have uh, could think of to do the th- do the job better? Uh, let us know. You can take a look at uh, at pictures uh, that we took uh, on our show page at Facebook at facebook dot com slash basic brewing. I think Casey and Jen did a great job and were very resourceful and smart. And uh, I can't wait to taste the beard. I'm so excited. Uh, that we did that. If you have brewing questions, show suggestions, or just want to say howdy, write to james at basicbrewing.com or just fill out the contact form on basicbrewing.com. And please don't forget to tell us where you're from. Be sure to check out our DVDs, Extract Brewing and Partial Mashing, Stepping into All Grain, Low Tech Lagering and Decoction Mashing, and Introduction to Wine Kits. You can find them all on our site, along with our Brewer's Logbook, which is now available to order. We've got combo deals to save you a couple of bucks if you want to buy more than one DVD at a time, and you can check out our basic brewing shirts in the store, too. You can see a listing of the fine folks across the country who sell our DVDs on basicbrewing.com, and if there isn't a vendor in your area, you can order them online in our online shop at basicbrewingshop.com. Thanks to everybody who's continued to click on our Amazon.com link. We appreciate the generous support. Our featured products this week that were purchased through the link are... Nostalgia KRS 2100 Kego Raider Refrigerated Beverage Keg Dispenser. Hmm, nice. And Star Wars Vader's Dark Side Roast Coffee. <laughs> the roast is strong in this one. And <laughs> I think Vader just needs a CPAP. Thanks again, everybody. And remember, I can't tell who bought what, so no worries there. Just click on the Amazon.com logo on our site the next time you feel like Amazon shopping, and we greatly appreciate your support. Don't forget you can also join the American Homebrewers Association or subscribe to Brew Your Own Magazine through our associate links on basicbrewing.com as well. That's all until next week. Until then, thanks for listening, everybody. I'm James Spencer, production help for Basic Brewing Radio, and our website is brought up by Kelly Dodson, Basic Brewing Radio, is a production of Active Voicing. We'll talk to you next time, everybody. So long.